What's happening, fellas? Check out this extremely rare super bike. This is a 1986 Suzuki GSXR 1100 full floater. Affectionately, we call this the slab side around here because of how flat the sides are of it. This is a uh, pretty much a twin to the 750cc Suzuki Endurance Racer. The same tall dual halogen headlight, tall gas tank, swoopy bodywork. It looks the same, but it packs a serious punch. This is an 1100. This bike definitely absolutely rocked the superbike world. Um, it's an ultra lightweight 1100cc superbike. The engine alone weighs 52 pounds less than the GS1150 that it replaced. It's an ultra lightweight engine and frame. Depending on who you ask or what, what publication you read, between 120 and 130 horsepower at 434 pounds out of the 1052cc engine. 10 to 1 compression ratio. This bike debu debuted at Laguna Seca in California, and basically all you needed to do to take it on the track was put a little safety wire on it and some number plates. That was it, it was race ready out of the box. Came with four 34 millimeter carburetors. It's air cooled, making it simpler, lighter, no, no uh, radiator or fans to deal with. It is sporting Suzuki's SACS, Suzuki Advanced Cooling System, was essentially an oil cooling system. They had two oil pumps that pumped a total of 22 quarts per minute, basically cooling the transmission, the crankshaft, the piston, and top end with an advanced cooling system in a large oil, oil cooler. Uh, this thing would do 10.7 seconds in the quarter mile at 130 miles per hour. It would go 150 mile per hour top speed, and the frame is a 28.2 pound ultra lightweight aluminum frame. It even had hollow, ho, ho, hollow axles on it, like you'd see on a superbike from the era. The, 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 the disc brakes on the front are massive for that era, 12.2 inch full floating disc brakes with dual piston calipers on both sides. Um, just a beautiful piece, man. The gold anodizing on the, on the uh, calipers. Now, this is not a, uh, a repaint. This is an original paint bike. It has some patina on it. I bought it from the original uh, owner who bought it, actually he was a second owner, he, he bought it in 87 or 88. He had his son, mostly worked through his son because he was uh, getting up there in years and he was extremely overweight, uh, so he couldn't ride the bike anymore. The bike just sat in the garage for the last 25 years, um, exactly the way he had left it. So he didn't want to sell it, but he was absolutely not in shape to, to, to ride this bike. He'd put on a couple hundred pounds. So in any event, it was time for him to let the bike go, sadly. Uh, it's exactly the way he parked it. it, has the same tires on it, chains and sprockets, uh, grips, everything exactly the way he parked the bike with uh, 21,084 miles on it. Bike fires right up, runs excellent. Uh, the motor sounds really good. The manic mechanic took a look at it, Jeff Castine. Um, he went, the bike had been sitting, so uh, he went right through it to make sure that, uh, that, that the motor is good. Took the carburetors off, cleaned them, tuned them, raised the needles, installed the larger main jet, um, replaced the starter relay, charged the battery, uh, lubed the chain, and um, fired it up, and the motor sounds freaking fantastic. Wait to hear this thing run. It is gonna need some work before it's street ready. I would definitely replace the tires, although, although they look good. They, the, they've been on there for decades, so definitely put a new uh, set of tires on there, maybe a new chain, um, rebuild the brake, master cylinder, front and rear, and the calipers, and, and I would, I would uh, service the, the, the full brake system, full recommissioning. The gas tank's been cleaned out, the car's been cleaned out, runs great, but it's gonna need a recommission of the brakes, master cylinders, and also the clutch master cylinder, uh, just due to age. So before you ride it, that's what you gotta do. Uh, original seat cover is intact, has a little rip in the front here. If you're looking for a GSXR 1100 to restore to concourse condition, this would be an excellent uh, example. If you're looking for one to turn into a street rider, uh, this would also make an excellent example. We're not finishing it because one, we got a six month, we have 181 bikes waiting to be serviced. So this one's being sold as is, needing to absolutely replace the tires, rebuild the brakes and the clutch master cylinder, and you should be good to go. Um, if you have any questions about it, give us a call, 860-454-7024. I'll fire it up so you can hear it run. Um, Judy, do you want to add about this bike? I know that you've seen a few, very few slab sites come and go through the museum here. Yeah, needing a little bit of work, it's going to go at a reasonable purchase price. So, low reserve on this one. Good luck bidding, guys.
Fire it up. Check out the four brand new pod filters Jeff put on there too. And it has a period correct Kirk or four. And a he one. micro drilled the pilot jet. So the throttle response is ridiculous. I like think, think purrs like a kitten. The top end sounds nice and tight. It'll absolutely fill the jungle with sound, no doubt about that. Uh, ignition? Yeah, the, the old boy lost the keys. Had no idea where the keys are, so the ignition is set up. You can use any key to turn it. You're gonna need a new ignition on it, but um, motor sounds fantastic. You know, a weekend's worth of work, a few hundred dollars worth of parts, and you're gonna be ready to go back out to Laguna Seca and race this in the vintage class if you wanted to, or take it out and run it with the new bikes. Either way, this is a kick-ass machine. Head turner, it's the right colors. Um, Two-owner bike, never been smashed or, or, or abused, and uh, it just needs a new home for the next 30 years. Zoom in on this side, you can see the April 86 date code and the VIN numbers here. Um, just a kick-ass machine that needs a new home. Again, if you have any questions, give us a call. Thanks for watching, and God bless America.